So across the top, we've got our different modules. You can see I've got finance, cash management, sales and purchasing. Um, we've got intelligent cloud insights. I'm going to point out uh, something here that's very uh, cool within the application. Again, um, talking about uh, the built in intelligence in the system that's always looking at the data and trying to present more information back to us so that we can kind of react to that information versus mining for the data. So I can come into my insights and I can see it mentions here I've got 16 of my customers are late with their payments. So this is a great place for our accounts receivable person to come in here and actually manage our receivables. So they could actually go down this list and contact the customers. And you know, typically what happens, the, the customer tells us, well, I never received that in that invoice. Well, I can open up that invoice and right from here, I can email it right off to that particular customer while I'm on the phone with them. You can see it attaches automatically a PDF. I don't have to scan something in and attach it. It does that automatically. I don't currently have a, uh, uh, a contact email address associated with this customer. Otherwise, it would drop that in there automatically. But I can simply put in the email address and send this off. So that is how quick and easy uh, collections can be and, and just following up with your customers through the uh, application in the system. So I'm going to close out of there and back out of there. And then we've got some other KPIs that are presented to us. Uh, again, cash available. I can see what my net income is. Uh, things like that. As I scroll down, we've got Power BI reports. As Janelle had mentioned, it's a great reporting tool. Uh, obviously, you guys are using that too. Uh, this gives us access to all the Power BI reports that we um, build for our environment. So we can access those here. Those are also available in our dashboard. So if I jump back into our dashboard and scroll down, I can interact with my Power BI reports right here. So I've got, um, if I select here, I can select different reports or I can expand the report that I'm looking at because if the report has multiple tabs like this one does for functionality or dashboards associated with it, I want to interact with that. So I have the ability to do that. I can click on here and notice it repaints the, the graph based on the selections that I'm choosing within the report. So this is very powerful. And then I can um, export this information out to Excel. Uh, I can go in and further, you know, do further analysis with that. So Power BI is an integrated uh, reporting tool that our, our customers take full advantage of. It just gives great visibility to the different aspects in our business. So very, very cool stuff there. And you'll notice as I uh, look here, uh, there's again some more insights here. When I log in, it identifies my user. It'll tell me what our top sales are. These are configurable, so whatever's most important to you. Uh, maybe we've done, you know, a new event and we want to track the the current um, tickets sold for that event, so we can kind of track that. So we can put those types of things at the dashboard level. And then as I go down more financial driven again sales orders and purchase orders so if we have some uh, purchase invoices that are past due we can see that information right here in our dashboard and start responding or reacting to those uh, activities within the system um, one thing that business central uh, uses or takes advantage of in our financial system is the use of dimensions um, some systems use like a sub account for your uh financial activities to determine you know whether it's a what department we're going to charge a cost to or division or something like that business central uses dimensions and just i'll just pull this up in our environment we have different dimensions set up and we'll just kind of talk about them you can see i've got a lot of different dimensions um, we do have departments, so I can set up my departments and I can look at the values that we have. So these are the departments that I can choose from when I'm charging uh, different aspects of our business. So if I hit, um, for example, my office supplies account, so I'll go to my office supplies account here, 
and I'll search for that. Notice it brings up my list of my chart of accounts and it looks very clean because we're only dealing with the natural account. Where we uh, drive into the details is using the dimensions. So I'll give you an example of that here. So if I pull up my office supplies, here's my balance of my account. Now I can take a look at this and we can look at the balance by dimension. So this tells me all of these charges, what departments may, you know, what departments make up this 18,000. So I can look at the GL balance by dimension and notice I'm going to go by um, my GL account is going to be the row and I'm going to make this 61,400 as the account. I'm going to just filter to that and I want my columns to be by uh, the department dimension. So if I uh, show matrix here, so we can see across the top here, I'll go ahead and expand this open. We can see that the admin department has 3,800. Uh, 3, My community programs has 4,650 in production and so on. So here is my breakdown by department that shows uh, what that total 18,000 would be. Now um, we can enforce that a department be used on the account when somebody places an entry on that. Um, so if I go to my, hang on, what am I going here? Under my dimensions, here we are. We can enforce that the department dimension be populated whenever this office supplies account is used. Because if I'm going to create uh, a budget for that, I want to be able to track and I want people to <laughs> be enforced to define what department they're actually charging these office supplies expense account, or excuse me, the office supplies against so that I've got a good look for my budget. So we can make that code mandatory. So anytime this office supplies account shows up on an entry, it's going to require that we populate the department dimension. So that's a great enforcement, sort of a business rule enforcement in our general ledger. So we use dimensions to help slice and dice our data, and that is one of the uh, big benefits of using dimensions across the board. So we can run our financials by those types of things, and we can, um, you know, pare down to departmental. We can budget by those uh, dimensions as well. So it just gives us a lot of flexibility, uh, again, while maintaining a very lean chart of accounts. So no longer do I have to add you know, 50 accounts to accommodate every department and every division in my business just to add one new account. I can uh, add one account and then we just magnify or we expand our dimension values to accommodate for a new department or division. So very cool stuff there. Um, let's take a look. Another thing that we uh, take advantage of too. So in my chart of accounts, if I scroll down to the bottom here, I've got some statistical accounts. So these are kind of out of the range of our normal accounts. And this is where I can book some uh, activities that may not necessarily be financial activities. They may be awarded a grant in January for $500,000 from the federal government, but we don't really have a financial entry for that. But we wanna track our cost against that or see what our position is for that grant. Well, what we do is we book a statistical entry for those uh, for the the grants that they've won, so that throughout the year or throughout the term of that grant, we can track. Hey, what do we have remaining for that grant at any time? So by using the combination of our actual general ledger to accumulate the cost and the statistical account to tell us what amount of the grant was won we can use account schedules to report on this uh, grant remaining. So if I wanna look at uh, grant activities and I'll just grab, I'm gonna grab this one here and I'll process, we'll just take a look at this one. Um, I'm gonna throw in January one, one. So we can see as I scroll down here, I know this is, I'm gonna shrink this up a little bit for us. So down at the bottom, we can see our we were awarded 500,000 of grants in January, 
and our total charges were 26,000. So we can track this all along our route for that grant and see what the amount remaining was. And then we picked up another grant here in February for an additional 100,000. So I can see that information here. Now what's really powerful, remember when I mentioned dimensions, so I can actually filter this and I've got a grant dimension that we use. So if I wanna track just the federal grant, I can filter it down to that. And in my account, now I'm only looking at the activities regarding that federal grant. So I can see that we won the grant in January and we started accumulating some cost here in February. And we can kind of see the burn rate of that particular grant. So at any point, we can always run this report and just say, hey, where are we at with this grant? This gives me visibility to the grant. And I can do that across the board. Again, the dimension filters by grant, and you know, we can even do programs. So we've got different programs that are associated with uh, counseling, foster care, outreach, those types of things. So we have the ability to see those different grants and have the visibility of that information as we go. So very cool. And again, that's a combination of using statistical accounts with our um, with our actual costs that are coming in.